Well, hello everyone. There it is. Uh, we still got a long ways to go. We had a big oak come down here. And people have been asking for some more details, and I said I wasn't quite done with it yet, but I have the hydraulic winch put in now. I still have to make a guard for the chain, but we're being careful and staying far away from it. But people wanted to know some more details, so I'll try and run through everything I can off the top of my head to help you out in case you're interested to build one yourself. So most all of this is 3 8 hot rolled plate steel. The pusher surface here is one inch and inside is a box that's all 3 8 and then there's some gusseting inside of quarter as well as on the end. The back plate, that's 3 8 as well, but there's a, a one inch plate at each uh, connection point for the cylinder. It's a 24 inch stroke, it's a four inch diameter. <clears throat> I've only have this set up to 2500 PSI and so far I have maxed it out and it'll split pretty much anything. I had it jam up on a some box elder I was trying to get rid of and it wasn't too bad. I was able to make a cut down here along the blade just a little bit of relief and then it passed the rest through. Uh, along here this lip that's half inch. The retract bar right here it feels like half inch. I had to add on a little bit more here from the original video. I kind of made a mistake when I built it. It was supposed to look like that originally. The blades are 5 eighths thick and there's one blade on the top. This is 24 inches wide and two blades vertically and it makes 8 inch logs. So this is just a Harbor Freight 13 horsepower engine, I believe. It's a 13 gallon per minute pump. And I think I can almost fit 20 gallons of oil in this. Now, eventually I'm gonna have wireless remote control on here. I happen to get these at a really good price. These valves are about $450 a piece. And I got one of them for $87 and the other for $65, which I got really lucky. Otherwise, I never would have done anything like that. So you kind of need one operator right now just to run the controls and then one person to handle the winch. The winch works great. I don't remember any of the numbers on speeds. Uh, one of these valves is a motor valve, which is where the center position of the spool is open and allows... The motor to freewheel so that the inertia won't build any pressure and blow out any seals. That was just because that's what was available. I didn't intend to buy that. So the motor valve is actually, or I'm sorry, the motor is actually working on the regular old cylinder valve and the splitter is on the motor valve. Reason being then you can suspend a load. Now the way you're able to do that then is you have to have a relief valve in here. And this will relieve both directions. I can't remember the exact name for it, but I'm able to do all of the work I need to with 500 PSI. And I'm happy I actually tested the whole thing out and kind of got an idea how much I should lift before purchasing that. They make two different variations, 500 to 1500 and 1500 to 3000. This is uh, Prince brand. This is Prince SV is the model for it and you can just stack as many as you want in there. I shouldn't say as many, I think the limit is 8 or 10. So these are all half inch hoses and then a three quarter supply line. It's not really necessary. 13 gallons per minute is kind of on the border. But if you can keep any, any restrictions down you'll have less heat build up. Now uh, this plug right here I believe it, uh, it'll establish a minimum of 300 PSI so that the pilots and the solenoids have something to control with. Only downside to that is you build up more heat. So we've been keeping an eye on it today. I may have to add a radiator. <clears throat> and the trailer was just an old camper. And it seems to handle the weight pretty well. It was a bit too much tongue weight. 
it's kind of hard to know exactly what to do. Eventually I might move the axle forward a little bit, but it does okay. And that's about all I can think of. I put this box on the side so we have a battery in there for electric start. And we can fit the chainsaw in there, a small gas can, any supplies, bug spray, tools. Works out really well. And the end on here is just bolted on, so if, if somebody really wanted to, they could uh, have two different size tools on the end. Unbolt one, put the other on. But that end piece probably weighs 300 pounds, I'm guessing. I haven't gotten this on a scale. I'd really like to know how much it weighs. I know my old, uh, my dad's big tractor, it was, it. Uh, it's a lot, I'm not sure put these lifting lugs here and lifted it on but it adds up all three ace steel if i had to guess this whole thing probably weighs three to four thousand pounds <clears throat> uh the rollers i can't remember where i got them i think i got them on new egg actually i would just searched uh Cable roller, there's some brass bushings in there. I made up the pins on a lathe, gave them grease zerk right away. Um, right here, it may have been overkill, but I'm not one to really know exactly how much I can get away with. I got some bushing stock out of the junkyard at the metal supply place and made those up. The rectangle tubing is quarter inch wall. And so far everything's pretty good. It's a little bit of a struggle if your wood splitter isn't completely level to swing this over. And the only other thing is I actually moved the wood splitter back from its original position just to try and get some weight off of the tongue. And that's a little bit more of a struggle then. So you're, you're kind of always manhandling the logs to get them to drop down into the center. <clears throat> Other than that, I guess, don't set anything in stone until you can try and build the whole thing would be my only recommendation if I was to do it all again. I mean, I'd have to guess tongue weights, maybe 300 pounds, it's not horrible, but I pull this with my minivan, and it does okay. We're not driving really fast, but it, it weighs the back end down a little bit. But so far, I'm really happy with it. I picked, got all this metal at... A local metal supply place and they just throw out all their seconds into a backyard and you can go pick it up and pay pay for it by the pound so I was able to save probably a good thousand dollars on metal so far so good though now hopefully uh, it'll actually pay for itself with uh, heating the house with wood either way it's a hobby some people say it's not worth it but we enjoy coming out here and collecting wood so Hope you enjoy this. If you build one, let me know. I'd like to see it.